This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review video for Sunday, November 20th, 2016. It is being filmed on Saturday the 19th, though. Anyhow, uh, this coming week is going to be a sh holiday shortened week. We have Thanksgiving on Thursday, the market's closed, and then Black Friday is a half day. So these weeks tend to not have all that much in the ways of fireworks. But we'll see. This isn't a uh, particularly normal period of time. Anyhow, let's uh, run through the market keys, get into the major market indices, talk about some of the momentum stocks, and then some other stocks I see setups in. Anyhow, the VIX here is starting to make some higher highs in this leg with higher lows. It's interesting that we close slightly below the trend line here. However, we all know the VIX never goes to zero, it uh, has a range, and the risk in terms of volatility is a couple of points down and maybe some more points up. So I'm definitely here in pure directional mode with regard to playing stocks. If you are worried about downside and wanna put on some protection or take outright short bets, I would suggest doing it with uh, long premium meaning long spy puts or long spy put spreads and what have you, but I'll talk about where I see things going. Anyway, the VIX pure directional mode here, the um, risk of course is a couple of points down and I see the risk to the upside is maybe a, a, test, t excuse me, a test of the 50 and 200 day. Maybe if we get a, a little bounce in our ounce here, we could get back up into the 17s, but not really seeing too much to be cray cray about in terms of uh, the market at the moment. The dollar, this is potentially, I shouldn't even say potentially, this is the most dangerous factor I see with regard to the the market at the, at the moment. I've been talking about the UUP, you can see we're above um, the kind of consolidation bar, we um, have been struggling to spend time above it, struggling to spend time below it. But we had a um, professional gap here for the most part. I mean, this was a gap up above trend in continuation. It seems like at the very least, it's gonna wanna fill the triangle up to the reference highs up here around 26 half now that we're through the um, 26, uh, 14. Um, we did now kind of come up steeply from the bottom. So I don't know that we may test above here, but I don't know how sustainable that will be. So I do think potentially a little bit higher in the dollar short term, but maybe not that much more in the um, in a bit of more of an intermediate picture. The dollar index, the futures themselves are a similar picture. Um, they are, however, through the uh, the reference highs and steaming up here toward a uh, channel high that I've drawn in. So where will the dollar kind of take a chill pill? So I have some theories on where I think the dollar will go. Uh, I'll show you on a longer term chart where we are. Um, we're about here, getting close to the um, 61.8 Fib retracement, which is at 102 basically 102.10 almost. And I don't know that that's going to stop it. And I'll, I'll show you why. Um, if you see, look how close we got here to the 100. So many tests and we're first punching through. Uh, yeah, we do have a channel high here. You can see we have kind of um, spent some time above that in the past. So it is possible there's a, a, a bit of a, a punch through. Um, a couple of things to think about. This whole consolidation range that we were in was $18.92. The consolidation of this range was $8.72. And if you project those moves up, meaning doubling this range up or doubling this range up, you get close to 109. Um, the 108.89 would be doubling these, um, sorry, doubling this range. And if you double this range, you're up to 109.32, I believe this is. So this is possibly where we're going. Uh, yeah, that will not go over so well in the uh, in the market world. You can see this is starting to look like a W bottom. 
And this could uh, really start taking off to the upside, particularly with uh, Fed rate hikes. This will be terrible for S&P 500 earnings. Uh, the only way I see this not being a bigger problem if we do kind of get that super move up is if we get some real growth, which is what I think the market is sort of signaling is going to happen. The um, interest rates are backing up and what have you, but the way that the market is going, you can see the kind of stocks that are uh, getting a boost. There are more of these materials and industrials. So if we get some growth, that might not be the end of the world for this. This, though, however, is horrific for the FANG trade, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So that's the uh, the dollar. The bonds, TLT, we are, let's get a little more today. Let's get, maybe not that today, maybe a little less today. All right, so we've been in a bit of an up channel. Got close to the top, didn't quite do it this time fully. This was a gap and go, kind of a professional gap and go below the intermediate trend line. And I had signaled this area was sort of a uh, an area of congestion, but we went through like a knife full of butter. This was a, remember I drew and I had a red circle here. I took it away just for points of clarity. And then I left in the, um, the yellow and the green. This here I thought would be a pause point. It has been, you can see this wide volume uh, profile, also the 78.6 Fibonacci retracement. And the 123.15 uh, 2009 top. Take a look. Uh, I'm going to get to the kind of the bounce that failed, but this area here to me is the channel low and 100% retracement from this entire leg. That comes in around 114.88, 115 ish. So this area to me is going to be critical if this continues to come down, like if it gets a spike down on the rate, on the actual rate hike. I think that rates might bottom, or I should say rates would top out, but bonds might bottom out around this area, at least for a bounce. Take a look at this. I want to show you. Um, getting a little bit better, getting the hang of this a little bit more. Oh, so for the, the, uh, the charting issues. So look at this. We kind of came down came back up, but look what, where we topped here. The high tick of the day was 123.14, and the um, 2009 top was 123.15, and then we backed off from there. So let's keep this very simple. If we can get back up above the 123.15, this down move is likely at its end. And maybe there's some type of a rally back up to either fill the gap or partially get to this area um, where we broke down from the 127. So I like a, a buy stop over this sort of intermediate swing high. You'd also be back up above one, two, three, four, five, six days worth of trade. So I'm not saying this happens, but if there was like a gap up on Monday and it could clear this area and clear the 10-day MA, then I think we could be back off to a, a, a more sustainable bounce. On a longer period of time frame, you have a 61.8 Fibonacci level coming in, a big 61.8, and the channel low. So down into this pocket the 117s, the 114s, 15s, I think this area to me makes sense. I like playing put ratios, meaning buying like puts here and selling two times out of the money down here. You can see we're getting a bit bombed out on the stochastics. And I don't know why this triggered. We are in oversold territory. You can see the last time was over here. We had a, a, a fairly significant bounce. That's happening again here. So maybe we get a bit of a um, a significant bounce in in that in that regard. This price is getting a bit unsustainably steep. Keep in mind this is bonds, not a biotech stock. So I like a buy stop again up over these highs for a um, play up maybe to the 127s. Uh, below these lows though, this can could continue. The ideal scenario for me would be for this to continue, and then to set up for a right or right out long. This could be. Um, 
the kind of sell off into the Fed and then the Fed hike marks the low. So that's my thinking with regard to the TLT. Now, TLT coming down like this, rates going up, you must be thinking that we are in a um, maybe a, a, a credit crunch. In absolute terms, this is still super de duper low rates, so I, I can't really get on that wagon. I did, however, play a short trade in this HYG. I had chronicled it in my last couple of videos and on Twitter. I talked about some entries and exits, and we wound up covering pretty much on the dead low. The next day was basically a double bottom up and then a gap and hold. So what does this mean for this trade? I will say that there is a heck of a lot. And look, by the way, look, the 200 MA here was a lot was support here. It didn't hold here, but sometimes the 200 MA is a little fungible, meaning, um, and you also had the backside of an old channel low. So this is why I covered. You can see we had this defined channel here. We had a bit of a look in and a gap fill. I covered a little, a little bit ahead of the gap fill, but you had a gap fill, a 200, this channel. I know it can be a little fungible sometimes, so we, we covered, and it wound up being a, a, a great move. I will say this. A lot of people are loaded up in these puts, these 83 down to 81s. It might even be more by now. So we had a rally up. I want to show you on a longer time frame maybe five years weekly, will that be enough? Look from this high down to this low where we bounced, we stopped at the 61.8 fib. Look at this volume distribution. This, by the way, this um, blue, I get a lot of questions about this. This, if you go into studies and you add in volume profile, that's what this is. Anyway, look, we came up to the edge of the distribution and now we're backing off. So I had said that I thought maybe just maybe, hoping against hope, we were going to get a pullback to the 61.8 of this range, which would take you down to about 79.85. Um, the 50% FIB is roughly around 81s. So it's potentially possible if we were to now lose this low, this 83.24 and the 50 uh, week MA here, I think we're coming down to the this fib, the 8133 and potentially 7985. What would that mean? Um, I think a little bit of this weakness is having to do with the pullback in oil and obviously the increase in yield in terms of the kind of the quote unquote risk free rate in government bonds. The riskier stuff has to trade at a, a, a premium. So I don't necessarily know that the pullback would mean credit crisis. I know a lot of people have been kind of whispering my ear about that, but it's just not what I'm seeing. And why, why do I say that? If we're going to have a recession, you're going to have a tremendous slowdown in terms of industrial growth. And look what copper is doing, Dr. Dr. Copper. It broke out of a, of a consolidation range at the lows, and it did it in style, right? I mean, this is a, um, a pretty, big, uh, pretty big move, and it's just kind of now first pulling back a bit. So as long as kind of copper remains above, don't you just love when this kind of junk happens? Uh, remove drawing. Let me draw that in price level. The breakout here, well, let's say 2671. Yeah, I mean, this was basically a, a gap and, and go over the over this on a weekly time frame. So it, look at all the time that you're, I mean, if you were short from all the way back in here, August, I guess, you're, you're wrong. So we're above a 50-week MA. I, I'm, I'm kind of okay as long as we hold. Um, we may have some kind of a check back to the breakout, but as long as we hold over there in the JJC, uh, things are starting to improve. The 50-week MA had been a lot of resistance. It is cleared now. 100-week is cleared. So I'm thinking we may want to articulate up to the 200 where, look, where this breakdown really took place from. We haven't tested back to there 
uh, since February of 13. I mean, that's a, or is this 12 or 13? 13, I believe. So that's a, um, a long time. The futures, the copper futures, the HG, uh, there's, this is a little more squirrely. Look, we're kind of in this downtrend. We kind of had a bit of a pop up and now we're back below the trend a smidgen. Let me, uh, get that on a daily. So I'm watching these kind of consolidation days. Take a look at this. Uh, ten, we're right on the 10 day. So I'm all right with this as long as we kind of hang out above the 10 day. Look, the um, hasn't been retested in a bit. So I'm kind of all right. Uh, this area, this kind of topping bar, if we get below 2.453, and sustain there on a closing basis. Maybe we get the pullback to the 20. But I'm thinking that this has probably just got moved up a little too far too fast. And just look at the way that this is sort of begrudgingly pulling back. I, I don't really see that being a recessionary sign. The other is the transports for the Dow theorists. I don't really know how I feel about Dow theory. But... I do know how I feel about chart patterns, and I'll say this. The transports have broken a long-term downtrend line, and they have formed what to me looks like a larger head and shoulders pattern. You can see you have a, a, a mini head and shoulders, uh, I'm sorry, an inverse head and shoulders within the context of a larger head and shoulders, and you're first now breaking up above these necklines. So it's hard for me with a trend line snap to not think that this is going to want to retest the uh, the old all-time high. And you have stocks like FedEx. These are big time stocks making new all-time highs. Look at this. Remember I drew in the um, inverse head and shoulders here. The neckline snap. This was a gap and go. Checked back and back to the races. This is not a bearish pattern and this is ahead of a holiday shipping season. So that to me doesn't exactly smack of recession or major um, economic trouble. Um, yeah, so IYT, I mean, look at this. You, um, ay, 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 ay. all right, so look at this. I mean, you ripped up. I mean, you had a little bit of consolidation and now it's, you know, closed on the dead high on Friday. So not to me looking like we're about to enter a bear market. Could there be pullbacks? Yes, but not exactly looking like a bear market to my eye. This oil here is starting to look, I'm getting a little better at that with this chart. It only took me how many weeks? This is starting to look also to me a little bit inverse head and shoulder-ish on a shorter time frame because that's what everyone wants to know where are we going in the next five minutes right um i had said i thought we would test back we would kind of support here and then test back to the 50 ma and we basically did it to the tick um there were a few doubters but no need to mention anybody by name anyway this pattern is to me a look below and fail you had a big hammer candle two down days a bottoming tail here that closed back inside of range and then a move back up. A little consolidation came up. We're in a bit of a pullback mode, but let me zoom. I want to zoom, but I don't want to have, oh boy, here we go. All right, so this is okay. So now we're in the, a really immediate now time frame. You can see we're still in a bit of a decline we came up just shy of the 50 MA and pulled back. I like, see these three day lows and the 10 day MA. So I'll keep it real simple for all. If we can clear the 50 MA, I think we're going back up to 52. At the very least um, to like 49, maybe this sets up a head and shoulders or whatever, but this would be a pretty perfect head and shoulders pattern. Um, if we get below these three days worth of consolidation low, given that you had a um, 
a high, I'm sorry, this high bookended now by two lower highs. And this day here, this Friday, was kind of bullish. Like you had the pullback, and now you were closed pretty bullishly here. Anything below 46, what was the high here? 46.41. The close here was 46.32. So I'm okay with this long above 46.41. If we were to lose these three day lows, though, here below 45.03. I think we would, at the very least, come down a buck to the 200 MA and maybe even retest the lows again. So I'm kind of liking long above the three-day um, consolidation or short below the three-day consolidation. XLE is, to me, looking like it's in an accumulation funnel for those who are Livermore chartists. The Let me see if I could zoom. Am I getting... Am I getting a little better at least? Not not really here. This thing just zooms and gives me the business. So we're at the higher end of the range here, which to me tells me oil isn't really in the complete fall out of bed mode. I, of course, am cautious. I don't love buying near the top of a accumulation funnel. I'm more of a buy at the low of the accumulation funnel or in the middle. But uh, this to me looks like it's kind of building pressure for a move up, right? I mean, that's that's the presumption. I mean, either this is going to build pressure and then have a snap down and get real ugly and probably retest near these lows, or we're going to eventually work up. I'm assuming since it's an upward move that this will eventually break up, but hey, I've been, uh, I can't tell you 100% until it does. The FXI is breaking the channel low. Please, maybe. Ugh, all right, all right, there we go. So you have a break, one, two, three, four, five, six days worth of consolidation. The 200 MA is just below. So below the six day low, I like as a quick short, at least to the 200 MA, and maybe for a fib, very possible. If you got back up above the, the, um, the six days and the 10 day, I think you would construe this as a look below and fail. Um, and maybe this would come back up to the 50. So yeah, uh, I like a short below the six day low and long above the six day high. Very, very simple. The Baba. So I talked about getting out of this thing close to 110. I did a lot of work on that one. Why 110? Um, go back and watch some other videos. I don't want to go through it again, but I started to sour on Baba up here. Uh, so very prominent hedge funds like Jim Chanos, uh, Kinikos, and a bunch of others are not fans of the Baba. Anyway, this came down. We basically got close to the gap fill. I was hoping for it to get a little bit more. Um, this area was the breakout, this 86.42. You have a 50% fib around 84s. Uh, you had a bit of a bounce. These, this day here was awful. It basically closed on the low, but we were able to kind of articulate up. So the 100 MA has been a little bit of resistance. So yeah, I mean, I'm okay with this. If you can get through the 100 MA, if you do, then I think we may articulate back up to the 100 level. If this is weak and we start coming back down, I'm going to start getting a little bit more iffy on Baba. Like this is going to, to me, start looking a little bit more like one of these, these rounded tops. And maybe, just maybe, it wants to come back down and test a larger FIB retracement like the 61.8, which is down at 78.59. Um, this was a big area of consolidation. And I think unless there is this, you know, Chanos talks about accounting problems. If there isn't if there isn't accounting problems, this is the kind of the edge of the volume, real volume distribution. So I think it will hold. Um, I could be wrong, but this breakout area between here and here really ought to hold if this Baba is for real. Up here is kind of a little spiky action, but I would be interested in selling some out of the money puts, particularly if we got down into this level. So we'll see, right? Um, abo below the 100 MA to me still remains iffy. Above it, I think we will rotate back up to like 98 to a hundo. Um, maybe, you know, to the downtrend, wherever the downtrend, you know, if it does it quickly, the downtrend is higher, up closer to 100. If it does it lower, it's down to around the 98s. So 
yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think that this could either rotate higher above the 100 MA. I like it for a little higher. Below, if we start revisiting these lows, um, that could spell some more trouble. And I would like put spreads or ratios for that move. IBB, this is just loves to do these dastardly things. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking. I'm trying, people. I'm trying. Um, <clears throat> it likes to bounce around in range from the high to the low. And here we have a bit of a lower high. Uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days worth of consolidation. The 150 MA here to me is the key. So if this were to come pull back, I'm comfortable with a, um, a rider right. I'm comfortable being long against this if, you, if it pulls back against the 50 and 100 day MA. If you lose those, uh, may God have mercy on your soul, right? <laughs> Uh, I, I think that the 200 would likely be in play. Um, you could see that this was um, sort of roughly some support here. It wasn't so much here, and then we kind of gapped over it. So I'm thinking that this area is probably going to hold it. Uh, if you can clear these highs, I think we might throw all the way up to 315. So I'm watching this consolidation range this uh, these eight days. Spy. So bear with me. I know the chart is a little messy, but we're about to get into some big time, big league, bigly uh, technical levels here. So let's talk about different time frames. If you take this high and you bring it down to this low, and you can see we're above it now. That really should mean that we're talking FIB extension modes, and the logical endpoint of that would be 230.60. Uh, if you just take this um, this high, the 213.78, and you use the um, 181.02 low, and you project that higher, that takes you up to 130.60. If you want to be a little less... Oh, uh, that was a total, total whiff. All right, let's go into th two years daily. All right, maybe we'll get a little bit more lucky here. Um, if you take the pre-Brexit high, all right, if you take the, ay, ay, ay. sorry, I'll get it one of these days. If you take this um, point move, this was the pre-Brexit high. This was Brexit, by the way which turned out to be uh, a very similar uh, setup to the uh, the Trump setup. Anyway, um, if you take this move, it was a, a large move down, right? 1382, 1387. But if you take a look at this, um, this run here, it was $20.95. If you take the uh, Brexit low, I mean, sorry, the Trump low. This was like before the uh, the move, right? This was a 200 MA hold. This was kind of a little bit of a punch through, but roughly a 200 MA hold. And you articulate that up, and you do a fib extension up of this move. You're talking about some interesting levels. You're talking about 226.53. And if you do the measured move, if this were to be the exact same move as the Brexit low to this peak, you're talking about 129.41. That's a pretty uh, big move, right? It's uh, almost 10 points over the last high. So that's where we could be headed in the future. In the short term, there's a couple of things to kind of discuss. One is that we held here, this low was above the kind of the neckline here, which is was good. I've also, by the way, taken the liberty. I originally had had a channel drawn in here, and we're now, believe it or not, got back inside of it, but I didn't really like uh, that channel anymore. It was um, not doing it for me. I like this one. I drew a new one. Look, if you connect these highs, they're roughly connected. If you connect these lows, like what I did was I connected these lows and then I just redrew as a channel and it fit perfectly. So I'm, I'm comfortable with that being our new, our new channels, our new, 
our new channel standard bearer. Um, please just all right. Our new channel standard bearer. So if that were to be the case, look what would happen. We could maybe migrate up to there. Shorter term, and I'm talking about you know in the next couple of sessions. Um, can we zoom in? We can zoom out, that's for sure. All right, so zooming in. Uh, we're coming up from kind of a bit of a mini megaphone pattern, and we're getting close to the top and this reference high up here, the, the, the 2196. Uh, and we're, as I say, kind of coming up from the lows, the bottom. So I think this area, short term, could be a little bit of resistance up at the last old all-time high. So that's my thinking short term. Let me, can I grab it? I thought I could grab it and move it. Um, maybe under manual? Hold on, let's see. No, not very cooperative tonight. Anyway, um, I'm trying to get this to do what I want it to do. Not cooperating. Anyway, I think that there could be a little bit more, but I think we may run into a little bit of resistance just because we've come up so far so fast into this area. Now, um, what does that mean in terms of, you know, is it short? Are we going to pull back? Uh, we may. Um, this was kind of the, the push up through. This is the big kind of candle that took us to the higher end of the range. You had a consolidation move. We never took out that low, and we are now above the high. So I'm thinking it's kind of a BTD move into the end of the year if we do pull back. Where can we pull back to? The 50 MA note was the wall of death for the S&P 500 after this gap down. I was hoping that we were going to come down and retest it here, but we did not. So I do think at some point, in the maybe not so distant future, we may want to retest that 50 MA. And that would take us down to, if it were to happen tomorrow, which it probably won't, I mean Monday. Um, this is, oh, come on. They just don't love to make anything easy, do they? All right, uh, this would be 214. 214.51 at the moment and rising. So I like the idea on any pullbacks to one, if we start losing this kind of breakout area, this candle in particular, like the push on through candle, like if we were to lose uh, 217.92, I think that there's a quick right or right out trade, at least to the 10 day moving average, which is kind of near these tops. It probably will be by those tops and this candle here. And potentially a move down to kind of this breakout zone. I think that there were some single prints down here that we never quite got to, and that's in the um, S&P. But I think we would come down to maybe the, um, the high here, which was 214s. This will probably be 215 at the time, maybe this reference low. So that's what I'm thinking. I kind of think that we're in a new range in the upper end a part of the range. And when this kind of tops, I'll draw in a Fibonacci retracement and I'll be targeting a 50% roughly pullback, wherever that might be. So that's my thinking with regard to the S&P. This may want to punch through here, get everyone excited about new highs. You know, they chase it, but they didn't realize that we came up from the bottom. So I'm looking to start booking profits at the very least here and maybe looking for a bit of a uh, pullback move soon. But longer term, bigger picture, I do think that this could be in the in the offing in the cards. If particularly if I'm correct about us being in a a new channel and just the way that these lows now kind of and these highs really coincide almost perfectly I think that that is the case. We're kind of mid-channel here. Maybe we spend some time going sideways. That, to me, by the way, would be the absolute most bullish scenario here for this market. If we were to come up to these highs, digest some of this overbought condition you can see, 
Uh, we're not really overbought, overbought on the money flow index, but we are a little bit overbought on the stochastics. So some, some consolidation time to me would be helpful. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the move. This is, by the way, not really super overbought either in shorter term. This has just been a bit of a stair step up after the kind of the reordering. So this isn't crazy overbought, believe it or not. What? Oh, um, this week, by the way, when IV is low, I use the expected move to the uh, sort of as the limit to the upside. I don't use it to the limit to the downside. That would be a dollar eighty-six on SPY. That takes you up to about two twenty thirty-six. A move down would be about two sixteen sixty-four. Given the IV acceleration, I would think it would be roughly to the fifty MA. So that to me makes a lot of sense. IWM. This has been a mo this has been doing the monster mash, so to speak. Um, this to me looks like an inverse head and shoulders. I love that the right shoulder is higher than the the lower one. I love that it stopped exactly. If you went, if you remember, I drew a sixty one eight fib here, and this is where I actually talked about covering. I had been pretty bearish on IWM on this snap, and it it, it held where I wanted. Remember the lower end of the box, and it has really done some magical things here. Um, I did expect a rally, but this uh, this is a uh, rip your face off rally, as they call it. So why is IWM so strong, you might ask? The answer is domestic growth. People think Trump is going to have growth in the economy again. Domestic growth with a rising dollar and being more competitive now, um, this to me is the play, right? IWM, you want to be more domestic. The rising dollar hurts international stocks like the S&P 500 and the big tech stocks, but it helps the small caps, the local stocks. So that to me makes a lot of sense that the IWM would be, at the, I guess, this strong. Now, a couple of things to discuss. Remember the box I talked about where above the high of it? So it's bullish, but we came up so strong so fast, I do think that short term there might be a little bit of issues. Now, if you do a uh, 1.618 FIB extension off of this from this recent high, I'm sorry, this recent high, the 125.88 to this from this low here, the 14, whatever this was, what was this? 115.05, I'm sorry, 114, sorry, 14.88. That would be roughly 132.68. So I think we are short term coming to a at the least pullback point. Maybe this just goes full on gangbusters and gets to the the channel high. But I'm thinking this area is is going to be where um, there it, it's going to be an area to peel off. Now what's going to really bake your noodle is if I'm correct and this is an inverse head and shoulders. This is just breaking out. Right? I mean, this is a fairly young move. Yeah, there could be a pullback to the breakout here, which was the 125s, maybe the one, I, don't, I wouldn't even say the 129s, but maybe to the 125s. Like if this were to come back, it would be the channel low and the breakout. I'd be interested in more and buy the dips. But if you put a 1.618 Fibonacci extension off of this entire move, now you're talking about 151 in IWM. That is a major game changer. Um, a 1.272 a 1 would be 138.75, but this after some maybe some back and fill could do one of these, right? Where it kind of um, it just ri it just grinds higher. Maybe that it does something like this. You know, it just does one of these. Um, it, you know, it. Let me zoom in. Hey, this just does not make it easy, right? They did something with the charting in the last couple of weeks, and it's just a terrible time. So you got these big moves up, right? Like these kind of straight moves, and then they just kind of ground higher. That's been actually very typical price action for IWM. You get like this bit of a pullback and a move back up. So we had a we moved below the channel. Now we're firmly back into it and above the old high. So it's very hard for me to be bearish based on, on this move. Um, it's just kind of grinding higher from here, and I think frustrating a lot of shorts and a lot of people who are really trapped. I mean, this did this very quickly. 
So uh, yeah, I, 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 I like the idea of booking some profits up here closer to the 132 short term. And then any move back down to this 125.88, I like selling out of the money puts against like a 50 MA. Look where all that support was before the snap. I would think that the 50 and 100 MA confluence here is a lot of support. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking uh, short term. Expected move in IWM next week is two bucks. So that would be 132.99 or down to 128.99. Q's. So the Qs are acting a bit more sluggish. This has a lot of tech in it. The Apples, the Amazons, the Facebooks. We're going to get into Facebook um, in a minute. That, that, to me, is setting up to be a very, very interesting trade, either long or short. And I'll talk about that could be a, a real barn burner. Anyway, this is up here at the highs consolidating. We've had this before. We've seen this story before, right? Um, I don't know if, if this is going to consolidate and then move up and out or if we're going to get a, a larger pullback. Uh, it's hard for me to get really terribly bearish on the Qs as long as we're above the 111s, as long as we're above the box high, which was uh, 114.39. Look where these lows kind of, they kind of dipped into the box and it didn't accept. The price wasn't comfortable there. We're back up still above these highs. We're right, I think we closed dead on the 50-day MA. So let's talk about a quick writer write out trade. You've had a lot of consolidation. This bar, this range to me is the absolute key. Anything above 118.38, I am hunky-dory with long. Below the low, or I don't even know if we need to use the wick, but below the closing low here, 115.75, look where this closed, 115.75, look where this reference here is, 115.75, that's no coincidence. There's 100 MA right here. Anything below that to me is a short down to the 200 MA, roughly around where the 111s would be. So long above the 138, one, sorry, 118.38, and then short below that neckline um, of the reference high. Expected move this week is about $1.30. That's about 118.62 or 116.02 on the downside. Remember, the downside will accelerate more because it the IV will, will go higher. So let's move on to the Momo stocks. All right, so we're into Apple. This, to me, is a bit of a mishmash, and I'll talk about that in the chart here. All right, so what happened with Apple? You had this move up, gap down, and continued down on their earnings. It got the gap fill, it got a little bit more, it basically got down to the 50% fib, almost, I think, to the tick, right? It was to the tick, 104.08. You have a bit of a secure low in here now with excess just ahead of the 200 MA. This was also, remember, ahead of the 200 MA. And you're holding in this consolidation bar now above the 10-day MA and roughly about over the gap fill. So let's keep it simple, right? We're, we're simple people here. Anything below the 108.80, let's say the 100 MA. Let's keep it real simple. What's this low here? 108s. Anything below 108 to me is trouble and a short for a move back down. If we continue and hold above, let's say, 110.23, above this, this bar's high, I think we're checking back to the 200 MA. Simple, stupid, easy. Amazon is doing exactly what we had discussed. When I say we, I mean me. Uh, <laughs> we came back down roughly 148 points. Similar move with a ricochet back up, coming back up just shy. Of, this was a, just shy of the 50, only to articulate further lower to the channel low. I can't tell you that that's going to be 100% happening this time, but we are getting the bounce. We got a, kind of a little bit of a look below here. I was actually hoping this would press a little bit lower at the time. It was the 200 MA and this breakout point which makes me a little concerned. You know, when I talk about pulling back, I like it to be a fully cocked slingshot. If you don't fully cock it, you don't get the full move forward. So this might be a bit of a, um, a weaker rally point. So 
let's get into the what now, the Marcellus Wallace what now, right? You're coming down, you have a bit of a trend break here. You're over the 10-day MA. So I'll keep it real simple. If we're above the 10-day, I'm fine with the long for the move back to the 50 MA. Anything back below the 10-day to me probably is a short back down to the lows. I'm going to just leave it there. Real simple. Facebook. So everybody knows um, who's followed me for a while. I have kind of been very bullish on Facebook for the for the in the past. I talked about pulling the ripcord really at 128 plus 130s, 130 43 actually to be quite precise. 128 33 and 140 43 130 43. And after that, I pretty much denied um, any knowledge of the long. We got a little bit higher, as we often do, and the stock has completely fallen apart. The tone in Facebook, to me, is starting to change. Why is that happening? For a few reasons. First, technically, look at this. The 200 MA here, even on the flash crash day, it couldn't close below it. Couldn't close below it couldn't even reach it. Now we have spent the better one, two, three, four, five sessions below the 200 day moving average. We had a snap of the trend that has held since the flash crash low. Uh, an attempted rally could not get back in a failure at the 100 MA and a move lower. And we've been consolidating in the wick of this bar. Look at the close here, 120.80. Look at this reference high here, 120.79. Again, this is this is no coincidence. Look at the high on the next day, 120.70, below this below this fib, below this old high. We're consolidating now around the this old reference high, and uh, frankly, not looking pretty. This to me looks like it's setting up for a move for the next leg lower, maybe down to 108. And I've even speculated maybe this could even really get going significantly lower. I'm not ready to make that call just yet, but I'm starting to warm up to it. A few things are going... Now, fundamentally, what's going wrong at Facebook? The reason the stock was down on earnings wasn't because this ran crazy hard into the print. It's because they are seeing their ad revenue slow. They have these fake news posts now. This news is coming up. Remember, the news always falls along the line of least resistance. It's been a long time since this stock has had a significant pullback. And I'm telling you, we're potentially in that mode. As long as we're below this day's closing low of 120.80, I am not cool with being long. But long as we're below the 200 MA, I am not cool with being long. If we can get back up above that high and then clear this emotional day, this kind of spastic, I don't like to say spastic, but these um, this big emotional day. I kind of treat these big range extension days as the gospel. I sort of do this with the Fed. I do it with earnings days. So anything below the 115.27, to me, at this point, it should not be revisiting that area, is a short. If you can get back up above the 120.80, I'm comfortable with either being hold or trying back long. If you can clear the 115.27, it's a long for the gap fill um, and maybe even a move significantly higher. What is happening, though, in Facebook? A low, a lower high, a now a lower low, and a risk now of potentially a lower high. The pattern is changing. Just be very careful with this. I know a lot of people still have a lot of profits in this and are in like Facebook decline denial. I'm telling you, you this stock could go a hell of a lot lower and you would you you'll you'll be like, what the hell happened? Uh, just be careful. You have a lot of consolidation here, multiple days below the 200 day. I am now way cautious on the Facebook until those criteria that I just outlined are met. Now, a funny thing happened after the bell on Friday. I love these cutesy Friday releases. Facebook announced that they're going to do about a $6 billion buyback, and the stock was barely up a point. It had had a bit of a pop. It was up more significantly than that after hours. Uh, one day, five minute. Um, 
you can see this came back up. It couldn't even take out the high of the day. So for a right or right out trade, I like using this range, um, this 118.95. Anything above that, I think we could probably go a bit higher. Anything below the low, though, of the day here, this 116.90, I think is a uh, is a is a short. Um, this, Monday and Tuesday, I think, are going to be big tells on this because if the stock cannot rally on a buyback, the stock is toast. If it can rally, then and correct itself, I think we're you know you know maybe all is forgiven. But if it can't rally on a buyback, the stock is in it, it's in for a um, it's in for the wood chipper. Let's keep it like that. Google, it didn't quite get the touchback I was looking for quite to the 61.8. It stopped a little bit ahead of there. But look, it stalled right on the downtrend line. It's below the 100-day moving average. So uh, short. I'm sorry. Google is a short until it can clear the 100-day. Um, yeah, I'm, we'll keep it simple. Um, anything below the 100-day to, to me is still a short. Back up above it uh, could be a long. Maybe it, it wants to work its way back up to like 810. Netflix. All right. So the Netflix was one of the few of these momentum stocks that actually did okay reporting. It was the first. It came back up to the old reference highs, and no shocker, there were profit takers, right? All the people who bought up here, who sat through this and all this, they wanted their money back. Um, the gap low of day was 116.50. As long, look at these consolidation. You have now, this day was below there, but you have. One, two, three, four, five, six days worth of consolidation. Anything above the six-day high, I'm fine with a move with a move long, maybe back for to the 121s. Anything below these consolidation days lows, let's use this bar and these. The, let's sorry, let's use the two-day low, 113.50. I think is a quick short to the 50 MA where you probably want to cover at least half of the position. And maybe a move back to the 50% FIB, which was really the breakout here around 106.90. At 106.90, I'm not going to assume the entire gap fills all the way down to the 99s. But what I would do is sell out of the money puts. Near dated, same week, out of the money puts that roughly coincide with somewhere between 99 and 101 because that's the 61.8, the gap fill, and trend. That should, should hold. Um... Wow, I'm going to have to run through these really quick because we're running late on time. JP Morgan, I warned everyone that this was a failed head and shoulders, that this stock was going to go higher. It, Sorry, it did. It, the, the, move in, the move for me is mostly over here. If you draw a 1.618 Fibonacci extension from the high, X out the flash crash low and use the Jamie Diamond bottom here, the 1.618 Fib is 81.80. You're through the channel. You're basically there. It's time to book some profits. If this pulls back anywhere close to the $70 mark, I, I don't know that it will. Um, but if it does, I like the idea of selling out of the money puts at the 67 strike. That was the old top. Uh, I'm going to skip Goldman Sachs. Ah, we'll do Goldman Sachs quickly. I know a lot of people trade it. We're close to the down a long-term downtrend. This may overshoot quickly to the this, but look, we came up from the bottom. It's time to book some profits. Um, this pro, I know a lot of people tried shorting the 99. I, I 199. I said don't. The stock is got, and it turned out to be a prescient prescient call, as many of mine are, so often are. <laughs> you have one, two, three, four, five days up here. Uh, if you get below this low here, the 204.15, I think you could try a right or right out short. Um, or try it up at the old all-time high around the 218, maybe buy a uh, put spread or something like that. The IV should be um, kind of smack or at that point. Gap stores, I was a bull on this stock. Um, really, for a while, I, I had been, I got out of it, I, don't, I forget the exact trade that I did. Um, I had sold it out up here, I think somewhere in here around 26s. It, it got a little further than, um, I didn't love this hesitation, so somewhere around here, I got out. It got a little higher. Then I got back in at the gap fill, actually. I had talked about it on the, uh, basically, perfectly, right, to the gap fill. And then played it again, and I got out somewhere again near the, I think it was at this reference high here. It was 27. I, I have to look where I was filled. But I got out near here. Um, it, it proceeded, of course, higher. Maybe I, I, 
I really have to check um, where the fills were. It was somewhere in here, though, and near the gap fill. I think it was 27. It got higher. It got 30, 74, so as usual, I was out a little bit early. Uh, you have this big gap down. Now, so where do we buy it? I'm looking to buy it again, by the way, um, but this is a kind of a seller shut-off pattern. Um, we did, however, hold the 50-day, which is, which is good. Um, I was hoping to the, get the 25 right to the 61.8 all in one day. That, to me, would be a good area to sell some out-of-the-money puts. If there is some type of a bounce now to 26.67, I think you can add or reshort here if you missed it um, with a tight stop, though, um, somewhere over the trend. If this continues lower, like we had, a, this was a, a $13 move lower. I don't know that we're getting that whole move lower, but I would I would be into buying probably somewhere near the channel low. There's a maybe we get the full gap fill again, right? The play the play works again. Um, we get the gap fill. Maybe it overshoots a little bit. So somewhere somewhere between 25 and 22.78, I'm going to start getting interested in selling some out of the money puts again. Uh, this has a decent yield. I don't think their business is dire. But um, they are serial disappointers. This ran ahead of their number. It was like an upgrade. Uh, they had upgraded their guidance. Now it's coming down. So maybe it holds the 50. Um, we kind of held the range. But um, I would, I'm going to start getting interested somewhere between 25 and like that 2278 that I talked about. Um, Glaxo Smith Klein, a quick one here. Coming down from the bottom, I got out of this thing right at a little early at 45, but right in the nick of time. I'm looking to get back in. Um, if this fails, this could really go all the way down to 31. Since we're a little um, short on time, I don't want to go back and show that on the longer-term chart. But look, we came from the top. We're coming to the bottom of the range, down near the 37, 24. It may overshoot even a little bit to 35s or whatever. But down here, I'm, 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 I'm getting ready. I'm going to sell some out-of-the-money puts as a long play. I'm noticing that these puts don't have a lot of juice in them, so I'm thinking that the the sellers are starting to exhaust. So down here, I, I may buy, I may try it with some shares for a right or right out trade, or sell out of the money like at the money or near near out of the money puts. Salesforce.com reported one of the best management teams in the business. I don't love Mark Benioff's political views, but he is a magnificent CEO. Uh, we gapped, we g stopped at the downtrend line. Um, does that mean the gap is going to immediately fill? Uh, maybe. Uh, it's possible. Maybe we even articulate all the way down to the low. I, I will set a buy stop up over 80.37 as a long because that would be a move over the earnings gap high of day. Remember I talked about the big earn the emotion days? That would be a break of the downtrend and a move over the earnings gap high of day. I may do that as soon as this video ends. I would think that that we would at the very least run to the old all-time high at 84, 84.48, and potentially we are in a new channel. If you measure this move, 31.88 off this low, that takes you to 98.65 and a channel high. I want to be there for that move. So buy stop it over 80.37, or you can try a right or right out short for the gap fill below the low, which was 77.77. Uh, I always love when those numbers coincide. Real estate, realty income, this has gotten monkey hammered. This is a very good company with a great dividend and a great business model. Um, they basically buy property from companies and then lease it back to them to change the capital structure play. Uh, we got the 61A it held. I'm going to probably start selling some out of the money puts here. I was really hoping for a full check back to the big 61A at around 50 bucks, and then I was going to sell like 45 or 43. Um, but maybe just again, hoping against hope, we get a trend touch. I will be a out of the money put seller just because this came so far so fast. I kind of, I don't know what I was doing around here. This is the old all time high. I may try this for right or right out soon. Maybe I'll sell some near dated puts, but down here to me near the $50 level, um, I'm going to start getting between 47 and 50. I'm going to start getting interested. Anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. If you're not following me on Twitter, my handle is at Justin Pulitzer. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. It's in the lower right-hand corner. Leave a comment. I, You guys and gals help me make these videos better. And uh, we'll have a great trading week. I'll probably do Periscope uh, follow-up sometime on Wednesday or Thursday. Have a great rest of your weekend. If you're not going to be trading this week, have a great Thanksgiving. Cheers.